From the Bryce Jordan Center on the campus of Penn State University, it's the 1998 Big Ten Wrestling Championships. And welcome in with the Hall of Famer Ken Kraft. I'm Brian Davis. Well, we have had our usual stories of dominance, intrigue, and surprise. It also unfolding, Ken, an unbelievable line on the team side. The University of Iowa is poised to take its 25th consecutive Big Ten team championship. They surely are. However, the domination has been a little bit more fragile this year. Penn State has done a great job of making a run at Iowa. And uh, consequently, Iowa has not got this clinched yet, but they're, they're in a position to do so. Well, here is the storyline. When the semifinals ended yesterday, Penn State was 12 points behind Iowa. But in the consolation bracket, the Nittany Lions have done some damage and have closed to within four of the Hawkeyes. That's right. And consequently, with those four being there, and of course, as you say, in the semifinals, Iowa won five out of seven matches. Penn State won only four out of four. So Iowa has the five finalists. Penn State has four of them, and, and of course, if Iowa were to win it, all of them, it's, it's done. So it all comes down to taking care of business. Yesterday, Penn State with eight men in the semifinals, Iowa with seven, but again, the Hawkeyes put five guys into the finals today, and Penn State with four. Now, does being at Bryce Jordan help the Nittany Lions in any way? You're reading my mind. I, I'll tell you, the, the fans here are so supportive of Penn State, and if they can get those Nittany Lions really hustling, they're still got a chance in this one. One of the things that we will see early on, well, first of all, the defending champions in this one, we've got a situation where you have for the University of Iowa, you've got two guys who are not only defending Big Ten champions, but defending NCAA champions, and so the weight falls that way to the Hawkeyes, well, doesn't they, it? They obviously have to be the favorite. And you're speaking of Mark Ironside at 134, great wrestler for the University of Iowa, and Joe Williams, the Chicago native, at 167 pounds, both defending NCAA champions. Well, as we get ready to start this match this afternoon in State College, Pennsylvania, Penn State will actually have an opportunity to put points on the board first because one of their men is in the 118-pound final. So we'll see what happens there. Also coming up as we get set to start, conversation with the legend, the Iowa Hawkeye, Dan Gable, who has been very involved in some things that have been happening this year on the NCAA level in college wrestling. So all of that and more as we get ready to start at Bryce Jordan Center in State College. Stay with us. Big Game James and the Iceman. I've been in that situation. Expert analysis only the pros know. That's not smart basketball. Weeknights, Craig Simpson and James Worthy take you inside. Okay, let's go to the Fox Coast. And tell it like it is. You can't play like that if you want to win. Worthy, Simpson, these guys pull no punches. Now, what was he thinking? Fox Sports News Primetime. We are there. Weeknights at 10. It's made of 100% rubber. Weighs just over five ounces. Looks pretty harmless. Blackhawk Hockey. This season on Fox Sports Chicago. Ahead of the 118-pound match that will start this year's Big Ten Wrestling Championships, we welcome you back to Bryce Jordan Center at State College, Pennsylvania. Along with Ken Kraft, I'm Brian Davis, and we are pleased to be joined by a man who is actually on a leave of absence right now, but Dan Gable, you say the name and you say wrestling. Coach, pleasure to have you along here. It's been a difficult year in some respects in college wrestling because we've had some problems that you were asked to help address at the NCAA level. Lost some wrestlers trying to make weight uh, as the, the season progressed. As a matter of fact, three fatalities in about a month's time. You were able to come up with some potential solutions as you at least try to bridge this thing for the long term. How do you feel about where you are right now? I think it's something that's been needed. I think it's something that, uh, you know, we, we looked at, and we're going to look at it some more. We're waiting for a couple more reports to come out, but I really think in the long run, it's going to make us, you know, just that much better of a better sport. Not that we want to lose any kids, but we needed to uh, do some things to make sure that their, their safety is there, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Well, I, I agree, and, and of course, obviously, there's still information to be had, and you're, uh, the Rules Committee meets in April, 
right. and the decision will be made at that time what we're going to do for the future. The Federal Drug Administration's report has not been out yet, and until we get that out, we really have a hard time making some real pinpoint decisions, but uh, yes, uh, there'll be a lot of decisions made in April, but in the meantime, uh, we've cleaned up some of the stuff, and it seems to be working pretty well. Well, at this point, wrestlers are banned from going into the steam room to try to drop large amounts of weight to make class right before a match. That's one thing. There is now also a seven-pound allowance in each individual class. Coach, I'll, I'm curious about something that, that you wonder about, and that is the potential effect of dietary and nutritional supplements on somebody's metabolism where some of this problem could be maybe uh, you know or exacerbated by the fact that guys are taking those supplements well, we're waiting for the fda to come out with their report and once that comes out then i think we'll uh, assume that uh, certain things are a certain way and we don't want to assume that now when that comes out we'll have more exact then we'll get after it dan gable joins us as we prepare to start the 1998 championship meet at the 118 pound class david morgan senior out of michigan state university and a sophomore wrestling in front of the home fans here at penn state jeremy hunter there's david morgan two-time defending big ten champion he's up against the guy who placed third in the big ten in 1997 he was the big ten freshman of the year Brian, w one quick question that we have to ask Dan because everybody in the world wants to know. Dan, you've been off a year. You're right now at the Big Tens. What are your thoughts for next year? Well, seeing what I see here, on, uh, some of the Iowa wrestlers are wrestling very uh, protecting things, protecting those 24 Big Ten titles. And, and, you know, I'm not sure really, you know, where I'm at mentally, but I think, you know, I, my whole plans have been to try to uh, get out of the sport from a coaching point of view and get on to some things that are very important. But aren't you getting the itch? <laughs> well, I don't like to see the kids perform up to their ability, but it mostly it's a fear factor which they have to get over some things. They're trying to protect our titles instead of trying to capture new ones for themselves. Good, good answer, Dan. In the first half minute of this 118-pound match, Ken, you've got your basic feeling out process going on right now with Morgan on top. We've got a lock called will send him back to the middle. Well, you know, Morgan's a, a great veteran here, and uh, Hunter is a true sophomore. He's a great young wrestler, and he's got a lot of ability. But Morgan is awfully quick, and he's tough on top uh, from the riding situation. So, uh, obviously, they're, gonna, they're trying to determine what's going to work, what isn't going to work at this point in the match. As the two-time defending champion, Morgan comes in as the number one seed. Jeremy Hunter is the number three seed. He won his first round match by decision, the second round by a fall, and then he pulled the upset. He decisioned Iowa's Eric Jurgen six to two in the semifinal. That avenged an earlier loss to Jurgens. after which Hunter said, you know something? My best defense is going to be offense. I'm going to attack, attack, attack. Well, well, he did a good job in that particular semifinal match. Here comes Morgan, a nice low single. Tried to change it to a double, and we're going to get one of those scramble positions. He's hooking that leg, the ankle, and he's got a shot, although Hunter is going to probably block it off here with the locked hands. Uh, obviously, a stalemate call is a possibility, but Morgan's continuing to make some progress toward advantage. And I'm not sure what's happening here, but it's kind of a tough call here. <laughs> it's a tough yeah, call. Yeah. Hunter might be in a pretty good position, but then... It's, uh, Hunter had him in some trouble for a little bit. Now it looks like... Uh, there it is. That's two points. Two for Morgan. Oh, yeah. He's got uh, some blood. Uh, Hunter's got a blood timeout. Uh, John Fritz coming out, the head coach at Penn State, a former great wrestler here, national champion. He's in his sixth year. Uh, he gave Iowa a heck of a go in their first year for the team race, if you'll remember, Dan. And uh, I, I remember. <laughs> he remembers very well. I can remember it came down to Troy Steiner uh, winning in overtime against Kerry Colott. Right. That was right. The, the center, and that was at 134. And Colott was a freshman. And since then, of course, Colott now has been a national champion, and he's also been a world finalist. Right. Here, here's the here's the play. He high-legged over here and put uh, 
He put Morgan in trouble there, almost put him down his back. In fact, if the referee would have been in position here in a second, he might have uh, been looking for the fall right here, right there. Uh, he wasn't pinned, but boy, I'll tell you. He was he, close. Yeah. He was real close. 54 seconds remaining now in the first period. We go three, two, and two. And the riding time clock starts for boy, uh, David Hunter, Morgan. But boy, Hunter's strong. Hunter's doing a good job of uh, putting him in danger. But then uh, Morgan's uh, been here before many times. You know, and I feel like that, you know, he's a veteran here. But uh, you roll around too many times, you get yourself caught. But right now he's in good control from the top. There's where Hunter's pretty good. But he has to be careful because Morgan gets him tipped a little bit. He could lose back That's points. right. Absolutely. And he, of course, Morgan is awfully good on top. He's been able to control people. Now we're probably going to get a stalemate call. Put him back down. Actually, that might may call that a little bit of potentially dangerous situation as well as a stalemate. Right. right. Morgan with 19 seconds remaining in the first period at 118 leads Hunter by two. David Morgan won his quarterfinal by pin, defeated well, Purdue's he, Tim Dernland 6-3 in the there's back points. Yeah, there there's he, back points. He hooked him. Did he get it long enough? I yeah, think, he did. I he think did. he did. He got the two. He's got, he's, now he's, now he's up. Back up. Actually, see, he put himself in danger to get the escape in reverse. Right. And it cost him. But you right. got to go for it. You got to go, go, go for it. it. You know, you. He did not give him the two. No, he gave him the two. Well, not on the board. I think he, I uh, Point two, one counts? Yes. Two, one counts, maybe, huh? Maybe wow. he started, stopped, and then restarted yeah. the count. That was, um. Now, once again, Hunter is in some distress, gentlemen. Yeah. Looks like he popped a rib a little bit there. Yes, he's, he's, uh. This one could be over. Out. Well, well, you gotta, I don't think it's over. Unless he's saving for the Nationals, you know, and, um, I would say that, uh, if this is an old injury, I think he'll continue. But it's a new one, it's hard to say. Okay, he's going to continue. His distress, though, is really obvious. Okay, we got a 2-0 lead going to second period. Morgan shows down. David Morgan, six victories this year by fall. He was 16-0 in the Big Ten. And there's a point for Jeremy Hunter. That was actually for um for Morgan. Morgan oh, for Morgan. Sorry, gentlemen. That's okay. They're a little slow on those points over there. I'm uh, I'm looking up top of the big board. Apparently, they're a little quicker. Yeah, there we go. Just noticed that. There's two more. Yep. He got the takedown on the edge. Should point out there, Brian, that as long as the one wrestler is still on the mat, at two supporting points, that will be the takedown. Morgan looks very strong so far this match. Yes, he does. Well, he's picked up three points here in 30 seconds time, and he's got a 5-0 advantage now. Hunter working. Morgan won't let him get away. Wraps that leg in. He does that as well as anybody. I've seen usually uh, people, when they do that, they end up kind of falling off the side a little bit, but he's done it so many times. He spent so many hours on top of people that he's in very good position. Well, it's almost, he, he's got that stick around that hip, hip area. He really stays tough with the hips up against his opponent. You know, I have, uh, last year uh, with the uh, national champion Jesse Whitmer, he just wrestled the perfect match against Morgan to beat him because he didn't have to go underneath him. Uh -huh. Never got taken down, and he... he That's he, a point. He right. chose to stay on the feet. Right. Yeah. There's a nice, oh. nice story of action. Oh, oh. wow. Nice Good action story. by both wrestlers. Very good action by both wrestlers. That was an almost, that was a point, 1.9 points for Hunter, but he didn't get the last 10. And now, you know, you start to think about the fatigue factor starting to come into the picture a bit. Shouldn't be major at this stage. Shouldn't be major at any stage, I guess, Dan Gable. <laughs> oh, it is, though. It is. It yeah. is in the uh, majority of situations that there's action out there. Plus the nerves that you have to have just to step on the mat drains you before you start often. Absolutely. Winding down here, the end of this period. We expect Hunter to choose down. Maybe he won't. Well, he escaped there, and I think he has to. Yeah, he has to. Now check Just his... get back in the match. These guys met January 18th at the National Duels, and Morgan scored a 3-2 decision. 3-2, huh? Morgan won at 3-2. Yes. So, 
They're close. They're very close. Well, and Hunter, all three of his losses this year, he's 24-3, and three, all three of his losses to wrestlers in the top six yep. in the United States. Now, Morgan is undefeated, 38-0, ranked number one at 118 in the United States. Well, he's a pretty good he, job. He's got him in pretty trouble. Good job. He's got him in trouble. He got the two. Reversal. And he lets him go right away. He's got that riding time, too. That makes that distance a little bit, the score a little bit further apart. Right. There's some good oh. action. Real good action. Real good action by Hunter. Wow. Oh, nice ball. counter oh. action by. Uh oh. Now uh -oh. they got they they're going to get probably uh, potentially dangerous. Potentially dangerous, but at the same time he's got that leg depends. He's going to yep. break it. Going to break it. They're going to be mad. The folks here are going to be mad. All right. That's, they'll be upset. Still neutral. Hunter did a nice job of snapping and moving with oh. his hands. Got him out of position. Hunter's been impressive in this match. Fans There's, are getting a little excited. Yeah, here. and John Fritz is calm, cool, and collected. I think. No, he's not. There's a, ba a poor shot by uh, by Morgan. Good, good position here at Hunter. Nice. Oh, beautiful. Heel pick. Tried it again, and there's the two, two takedown. Going to let him go. He's got to let him go because of the riding time. Yeah, it's 7-5. Got to have two more takedowns. It, yeah, with the riding time, which can't be canceled, it's 8-5. Right. Going to have to put him to his back. Could get a stolen call, but I don't think he's been warned yet. I think they're going to call him. They called him. There it is. Warning for stalling on Morgan. Hunter's in on that single leg. Hunter's in on the single, but it's a pretty good counter. He's now coming he's, around. He's, he's coming got around. The angle on him. That's two. He's going to have to have a takedown to tie. Takedown to tie. Takedown to tie. 12 he's seconds. He's in on it. He's got his arm around oh, the waist. He, he countered it. He, he did a heck of a job countering it. Oh. No points. No points. Right on the buzzer. Time was out. Wow. Hunter did a nice job. What, a, that. what a start for the championship round. Wow. David Morgan goes to 39 and 0 on the season and make him a three-time Big Ten champion. What a great finish, though. Oh, it was great a great spirit by Hunter. Match. Wonderful match. I thought you were starting to go gray. I was, but I never did. So what happened? The miracle? You can't tell. Tell what? I use just for men. That's hair color? Even your barber can't tell you use the hair coloring called Just For Men. Simply shampoo in, then rinse. In only five minutes, this unique Just For Men formula blends away the gray, actually matches your gray to your real color. I never would have guessed. Just For Men, so natural, even your barber can't tell. If you like underdogs, you're gonna like this one at 126 pounds. That's Joe Warren. Sophomore out of the University of Michigan. He came into the Big Ten Championship. The number six seed, he's against the top dog, Eric Jaton. The 1997 Big Ten Champion at 126 out of the University of Wisconsin. Jaton is another one of those number one ranked people. You know, we're at the Big Ten. This is Big Ten wrestling, and we've got, coming into the tournament, Brian, six of our wrestlers are ranked number one in the country. Uh, Eric is the second one. We've already seen David Morgan. A little bit about Joe Warren. Joe came in, as you mentioned, sixth seed. He's a good, tough, solid kid out of Michigan. But he came from behind in the semis in a beautiful comeback match. That's two for Jaton. Jaton starts it off with that two-point takedown. He's another guy that's tough on top, being Eric Jaton. Eric Jaton won the Big Ten last year, third of the NCAAs. His last loss was on December 6th. He took the number one national ranking away from Eric Guerrero of Oklahoma State by a 3-1 decision about a month ago on February 6th. Five falls this year after recording four total in his previous three seasons. Uh, well, he, he can be dominant. He's tough on top, good on his feet, and he's a veteran. He's another one of those veteran guys. Uh, 
he got that number one ranking. He really earned it by beating Guerrero and beating Henson of Iowa State. So it wasn't a matter of just one win. He, he beat all those top guys. He deserves to be up on top. Uh, back to Warren for just a minute. He's, be, you know, he's down now. He's down 2-0. In the semifinals, he was down 7-1 to and steamed back to a 12-8 uh, win, which means he can really come from behind. Uh, that was with a Penn Stater, as a matter of fact, uh, in that match, I believe it was Betts. Yeah, that Jason he, uh, Betts. As a matter of fact, he started. He started by beating an Iowa. Right. Doug Schwab, the number three seed, eight to two. Then he scored that 12-8 victory over Betts. Betts had beaten the number two seed, Carl Perry, out right. of Illinois. So the path was was cleared for him then. But of course, he had to take care of that business in the first round. Right. Exactly. Now you see, Zatan is really working hard. He's got that leg covered and and, and controlling it. And looking for the back points. In fact, uh, referee McCormick is indicating there's a three-point near fall for Jatan. As soon as they get out of that situation, then he'll officially score. See his three fingers laying out there on the mat. Now, there it is. There's the three-point near fall. Making it a 5-0 lead. So far, it's been uh, very dominant by Jatan with that tough ride. You know, there's a, there's a ride, and then there's tough rides. Tough rides can result in back points and pins. We're into the final 21 seconds of the first period at 126. False Breaks him up, false start. False start, and now he's, he's cautioning the top man for a false start. Uh, that's no points, but it is a caution and could result in points later. Chitan won his first round match by decision. He scored a technical fall in the quarterfinals, and then he beat Michigan State's Pat McNamara. Six to five, narrow one in the semifinals. McNamara is a very outstanding. Hey, Warren's got something going here now. He's, he's going to run out of time. Oh, that was close. That was close. And they signal a one point escape for Warren. Let's take a Here. look at the first two of the match. Here's the takedown coming up. Front head and arm. Then reaches, takes the near near leg and just does an excellent job of the trip and taking Warren to the mat for two. Jatan starts the second period on top. On top. Still that 5-1 now. Escape by Warren. And Warren has been a just an aggressive guy, and part of that aggression can cost you. And they just did right there, cost him a takedown. He's now down five. Joe Warren, 17 of his 27 wins have been for extra team points. He holds the University of Michigan record as we take a look at the Wisconsin bench. He yes. holds the University of Michigan record for fastest fall. He pinned a guy in right. 15 seconds at the Las Vegas Classic. Well, he. You can see he sometimes can be referred to as the brawling type wrestler. He's going out there to throw you on your back. He doesn't go worry about points. Uh, unfortunately, he has to worry about them right now, but he still has to wrestle his style to get back in this match. Now, Jatan's working that near side again. He's got that leg in, looking for the near arm. And uh, so far, hasn't been able to lever Warren over. Warren trying to get his, his left hip down to the mat. Warren is actually up in class. He has also wrestled at 118 this year, as well as 126. What difference does that make? Well, it depends. I mean, of course, you know, he's also young. Maybe he's still in a maturing process, uh, where 18 maybe is no longer in the plans because he's probably grown a little bit. And of course, strength can always be a factor if you're going to move, move a weight class. Now he's trying to go out the back door. Potentially dangerous. Call. Stop the action, start where you were before. Got him rolled over there for a moment. Yes. Attempted stand. Now he's he lost a bit of the ankle, but not enough. Now Jatan again using that leg. Yep. Yep. He's uh, he's very clever with that. He's very good with it. See, you always watch where his legs are working to control the man as well as with the arms. He's barred that near arm now. On the left side, we really can't see it at this point. And the referee's watching that carefully. Trying to drive the pressure. Now he's released and now going up toward the head. 
Jutan has got an unbelievable advantage in riding time as the second period comes to a close. Seven to two. So now Warren's got his work cut out for him. Yes, he does. Take and, down, uh, escape, take down, escape, take or, down, escape, or pin him. I think he, he's going to be the kind of guy that's going to... He is going to release, but now he'll look for throws from the... He's going to look for throws from the feet where you take a man directly to his back. Uh, he knows that he's got... He feels like he's got more confidence doing that than any other thing. In high school at East Kentwood High in Grand Rapids, Michigan, he was 159-8 and eight after his sophomore season. He broke the national takedown record, scored 487. Ah, uh -huh, yes. Well, he's awfully good on his feet, and I like the way he puts people on their back. Well, he's got a, a false start. He started too quick. That was against Warren. Just a caution. Jatan doing a good job of keeping his lower body right way back. Yes, he's, he keeps good position. Position is so important in this sport. You've got to have those hips over your feet. Now, nice, nice double leg takedown. That's two. Yes. That makes it 10 for Jatan. Oh, an attempted roll by Warren. He got a one out of it. Oftentimes that can result in more than more than one, and often reversal with a man on his back. They're both standing. One minute to go. Warren's trying to work off that elbow. Oh, but what a nice counter. See, there's the attack, the counter, and the counterattack. And uh, Jatan did a wonderful job there. Now he lets him go again, but it's 12 to 4. Oh, oh there's, the, there's the old somersault attempt. And that's the takedown by Jatan. Releases, or looks like he's releasing. Yes, he is. 30 seconds. Yes, I, I believe that Jatan is just uh, so dominant. Eric Jatan, again with that number one national ranking, he is right on the verge here of going to 26 and one, taking that heady record into the NCAA's. Well, we can look for a very high seed, and if not the first seed, I don't know how they would explain it, but uh, I would think that Eric Jatan's got a great chance for the number one seed in the national tournament. Winding down to the end of this one, Brian. Eric Jatan will repeat as Big Ten champion at 126 pounds. Now Jatan, looking at the NCAA track re record on this guy, he was third two years in a row in 96 yes. and yes. 97 at the NCAAs. He finished in 1996, two seasons ago, third in the Big Ten. Again, now he has won consecutive championships, and here is some of his earlier work. Eric uh, had so many takedowns. I don't know which one this one was, but it was a straight-in straight double, and then he goes ahead and traps the leg right away. He, uh, he just was outstanding and dominant on his feet. Here he's going to go up, get the altitude a bit, and then uh, turn for another takedown in the third period. He wins on it top. 19 to 7. Terrific, terrific. Over Joe Warren of the University of Michigan. We interrupt this program for a Blackhawks home ice update. Brought to you by the Discover Card. Still Hawks, one Oilers at the UC. Pat Foley has the call. Kilger with a moves in, does a shoot right on Kilger, rebound. And it was deflected wide. Two great saves from Joseph. As the puck is cleared back the other way. There it is, Joseph, with a marvelous first period. The ultimate Derek Jeter dream date. First, you call a girl. Tell her that you're preparing a perfect candlelight dinner for her. I throw in some R&B. I can't cook, so I'll order some food. Tell them to give me the works and put it on my Discover card. Splash on a little cologne. Throw on your apron. The Discover card cash back bonus is the icing on the cake. What else would she want to do but to watch highlights of us winning the World Series in 1996? It pays to discover. To apply, call 1-800-IT-PAYS-2. Accepted where you see the Novus sign. 
This copyrighted broadcast is presented for the entertainment and non-commercial use of our audience. Any reproduction or other use of this program without the express written consent of Fox Sports Chicago is strictly prohibited. On to the 134, the defending NCAA champion, three-time defending Big Ten champion, undefeated this season, Mark Ironside out of the University of Iowa. And this is a big head-to-head -head match because Biff Wallizer is wrestling for the home team, Penn State. Well, obviously, Mark Ironside has been so dominant uh, throughout his career for the last two years, and in particular this year, since the Midlands, by the way. You know, he won a lot of close matches in the Midlands. He won his third straight Midlands, which we host in Northwestern in December. But he has been so dominant since that time. And you've got Biff Walliser, who comes in here as a sixth seed, by the way, as Warren was. Uh, and he's 17-17 on the year. I mean, he's a 500 wrestler, and here he is wrestling in the finals. But he's the kind of little bit unorthodox wrestler that can catch people and do some damage. Um, Ironside's got to be aware of that, and I'm sure he is. Ironside didn't like what he did in Evanston, has scored a bonus point victory over every opponent since the Midlands. He is riding a 61-match winning streak, his last loss in the 1996 NCAA tournament. And he's the guy, I was talking earlier about position. This guy maintains wonderful position in any match he wrestles, and he's always ready to attack. He's ready to counter, ready to counter attack. Uh, and he never stops. He's the whirling dervish. If there's one contemporary wrestler the way I was styled, it's Mike Ironside. There they are, the lineup, and uh, you have the brand. Oh, I'm sorry, that's Jim Selesky. You gotta get those glasses back on, and Tommy Brand sitting right to his left. Well, and he's got both of the outstanding brand brothers on his staff. Yes, yes. Now, these guys have been head-to-head -head twice this season. Both times, Ironside has scored major decisions. 11-2 in a duel meet the 3rd of January, and then 14-5 at the national duels on the 17th and two weeks later. Right, so there, there it is. It's, all, it's obvious that the, where the favorite is, but strange things happen. Oh, a beautiful move by Wallizer. This crowd will go nuts. He used the front headlock, an inside trip, and, and it worked beautifully. He's got two, and Biff Wall, I said, will go back to the center of the mat on top. Yes, he will. And I, I've never seen anybody hold uh, Ironside down in recent matches. We'll see what Wall Iser does with it. This crowd is just going to go absolutely crazy to back Wall Iser, and it may have a, he'll have an impact, but Ironside's out with the escape. Mark Ironside was voted the outstanding, outstanding wrestler in the conference meet in Minneapolis a year ago. He was also the 1997 Big Ten Wrestler of the Year. Into the final half minute now, the first period. Again, it's a 3-2-2 two, and two format. And here comes Ironside. He hit, hit an outside single, and he's trying to score with it. But Walliser, again, he's, he's a scrambler. He, if he's got his hands locked, I think we're going to get a stalemate out of it. And that'll be the most, though. Four seconds to go. No points. No. Referee Jim Ramirez, watching carefully and closely, calls it no point, no advantage. Jim Zaleski's on his feet. Look at this beautiful move that Walliser hit. He's in that front head. Now watch the inside trip. He drives Ironside right back over his hips. Beautiful takedown. Biff Walliser pinned Scott Schatzman of Northwestern in the quarterfinals. Decision James Torres of Indiana in the semis. Yes, he did. And Torres had prepared the way for Walliser in the quarters by beating the number two wrestler, Damian Logan from Michigan. That's right. Uh, Logan, Logan went out with an injury default in that match. Uh, Walliser will do different things. I mean, he is right now way up high. Most people wouldn't be that high. But he's working, trying to make something happen. And it, it appears he's going to be in some trouble, but he's got that head and arm locked up tight. He's still in control, but falling way off the front. Another stalemate call by referee Ramirez. There might have been some pressure on the neck there too, Brian. 
John Fritz over on the Penn State side. Say, bring him down, bring him down. Yes. Now I believe he's out of there now, almost. There it is. He's There's got the it. escape. So we're tied at two. Jim Zaleski carefully observing what's happening out here. Something to watch as we go on here. Now remember, Wallizer has got nearly a minute's worth of riding time. Yes. Uh, and generally, Ironside can be real tough on top and ride tough, but he often feels so good on his feet. An attack. Watch the counter by Ironside. He usually is very good there. Now they're hooked up over and under, both of them, by the, with their arms. Now they swing out of it. Oh, beautiful That's move true. by Ironside. Heel pick, drove him right through. I want to look at Wolleiser closely at the end of this period. He, he's beginning to show, to me anyway, uh, signs of fatigue. That's very possible. Uh, this has been a, a very high action match with a lot of muscle work with the, with the tie-ups. And that takes its toll. And Wallizer will be down beginning of the third period. And that'll help take care of some of that riding time advantage that he had established over Ironside after the initial takedown. Right. Coach Zaleski now. Here, here's the move. Comes, comes off of the arm right to the heel drove through it came up on top for the two-point takedown to go ahead four two ironside now on top as we go to the third period ironside again 29 and 0 in the season first round by technical fall against isaac miller of michigan state and then in the semis pinned jeff booker of ohio state at yes. the 436 mark booker's an outstanding rest with his own right now, now Ironside is essentially, I thought he was going to release him, but he chose not to do it. Still on top. We should point out, you know, there's, there's, we're watching 20 wrestlers, the finalists. We started yesterday with 109 of the great wrestlers in this country. These are the 20 that made it all the way to the finals. Important to remember here again, if you're looking at the big picture in Iowa's chase for a 25th consecutive team title, here you have as Penn State challenges starting the finals four points behind. Here you have these teams head to head. Well, uh, that's right. And of course, Penn State did not win it at 18, of course. And if they lose this one and Iowa wins it, it's over. There's a point for Wallizer. Oh, and Ironside moved right behind. Another takedown, and he takes a 6 3 lead. And he's releasing him again. He feels so comfortable on his feet that he can take Wallizer down. He's just going to let him go and trade the two for one. Two for the takedown, one for the escape. At this moment, too, now remember, Ironside has 40 seconds advantage in riding time. Right. Although that, that will be shortly uh, not, not in play. But at a 6-4, if Wallizer gets the score on a takedown, we tie it up. So this is still not determined. But Wallizer doesn't look like he's got a whole lot of things happening right now. There's Zaleski on the Iowa bench, and they'll go back to center with 20 seconds remaining. 20 seconds, there will be no riding time in this match. But Wallizer's got to set something up and make it happen. And he seems to get him there. He dives in on a single but not with a follow-up move. And Ironside put the takedown. Mark Ironside, in the end, just too strong for the yes. junior Wallizer out of Penn State. And Mark Ironside has made it a sweep in Big Ten Championship composition, competition that, four that, times. That is very, very, very special. There have been a few that have reached that pinnacle, but very, very few. My last year, uh, I made it to the city championship. 
it was great just going through the whole situation and playing here, playing there, different high schools and you know in the playoffs, you do or die. You got to do your best. It was always about being tough and having confidence. I don't have no mercy on you. Uh, I'm not scared of you. You knock me down, I'm gonna get back up. Have confidence and uh, don't back down. The IHSA Boys Class A Championships start Friday at noon. You can tell by the look in their eyes. They're in the zone all the way. Nothing can stop them. There's no turning back. Only one will be able to call themselves a champion. It's the Fox Sports Chicago Celebrity Three-Point Shootout, featuring some of your favorite personalities from radio, TV, and sports. Then watch the pros do their thing as the Bulls look to take down Keith Van Horn and the New Jersey Nets. It all starts in the game room next Monday night at 7 on Fox Sports Chicago. Coming up Friday and Saturday, we're in the thick of March Madness in Fox Sports Chicago, your home for all the action. See the best in Illinois battle for glory with the Boys Class A Championship. The quarterfinals Friday at noon with the semifinals and finals Saturday starting at 11 on Fox Sports Chicago. With Ken Kraft, I'm Brian Davis. Through 134, your unofficial standings. And now Iowa has put itself in, into a real good spot in terms of the team race. Yes, they do, and right now they are in, in great shape to win this thing all. Jeff McGinnis, a former Big Ten and NCAA champion, senior for the University of Iowa at 142, wrestling against another senior, two-time All-American, Jason Davids. Davids, 32 and 2, by season record, he's the number two seed. McGinnis comes in at number one, ranked third in the United States. Jeff McGinnis, here you go, oh, a nice inside trip by Jeff McGinnis for the first takedown. 20 seconds in. Right, and we, here we've got two fifth-year seniors. Guys have been around a long time. They're both veterans. McGinnis is a, an interesting story, and there's Coach Jay Robinson and his staff from the University of Minnesota. But McGinnis was a national champion three years ago at 126. He's up two weight classes since that time, and he's done well, but he hasn't been as dominant as he was, of course, when he was at the lighter weight. Big Ten and NCAA titles in 1995. He redshirted in 1997, the year before right. he was second right. in the conference meet. McGinnis won the pigtail round by medical forfeit. Major decision in the quarters. Beat Illinois' Adam Terrapel 6-2 in the semifinals. Jason Davids Road took him through a medical forfeit. Pinned Mike Castillo of Michigan State in the quarters and then decision Jamar Billman of Penn State 8-6 in the semifinals. That was, a, that was a great match in the semifinals in that uh, Billman from Penn State is a true freshman and he is going to be a C. We're, we're going to see him in the future many times. Oh, beautiful outside switch action by Davids. Nice step over by McGinnis. And I think he's countered the motion of Davids. Yes, he has. McGinnis is a very heady wrestler. Uh, I've, always, I've watched him wrestle for a lot of years, and he is uh, always thinking, using good heady kinds of moves, uh, really brings a lot to, the, to his game. Got that leg in. You can see most of the fellows will usually from the top position get to that situation. McGinnis decision Davids in a dual meet January 23rd. Five days prior, Davids had decisioned McGinnis 3-1 in overtime at yep. the national duels. Yes, yes. So you're, we're looking at the, the, the rubber match this year between these two. They're one and one coming in. Of course, McGinnis has the lead. Coach Jay Robinson and his staff on the Minnesota side. Mm-hmm. Jay has built this program at Minnesota into a very strong program nationally and, of course, obviously in the conference. McGinnis hooked in now, got the crossbody ride on, and he's trapped the far arm. Uh, that's a difficult one, but McGinnis has to continue to work, try and turn the man over. He just cannot hold on. How strong has he built the University of Minnesota? Final team poll, Oklahoma State on top. Iowa, Penn State, and Minnesota, two, three, and four. And they've been there for a number of years now. Uh, they hosted the NCAA two years ago and, and made a nice run at it. Uh, he is putting a lot of pressure on uh, that, that arm or that leg. 
No, he switches and goes up high. Yes, yep. Releases and now puts the pressure on the upper body. Uh, he's, uh, as I say, he works all, all parts of it. The key in controlling in a man is oftentimes controlling both ends of the spine of your opponent. And uh, you can work lower, you work the top end of it. Well, Jeff McGinnis took down Jason Davids in the first 19 seconds. Watch, watch this motion now. He's going to cut. He takes him straight up. Now watch the inside trip quick. Catches the ankle and the leg as he goes down. And there's the two-point takedown for McGinnis. Rode him the rest of the way, too. So his riding time clock, 241. And controlled him with tough riding. It was not a hang-on. It was tough riding. And he gets the escape. McGinnis leads 3-0. Three nothing. Should point out that Jason David's father was uh, an outstanding wrestler for the University of Michigan. Uh, Bill David's wrestled there about 25 years ago and was a great wrestler for them. Moved to Minnesota, and uh, his boy ends up wrestling at the University of Minnesota. David's mentioned he's a two-time All-American. He was second in the Big Ten at this class in 1996. 14 victories by pin, yes, including, he, that's his career, including the fastest fall of the 1995 NCAAs in 18 seconds. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, he uh, he is a thrower. Uh, in the international style, Greco Roman, uh, he does a lot of that kind of wrestling, and he can put people in their back early and sometimes often. There's Jay Robinson again, trying to. Get his guy to get a takedown and get back in this one. Davids. Oh, nice move. Low single by Davids. He doesn't have the control yet, but he's now he's uh, he's been countered nicely by McGinnis. Thirty. You just want to square it off here. Oh, he tried to hit that inside single, inside trip. On the edge. Got him off balance. Yes, he does. Nice counterattack. They're close. They're down inside. Right at 10 seconds left here. And uh, takes that. So Jeff McGinnis with a 5 nothing lead on Davids as we go to the final period. Okay, now there's a choice by David's had a choice, standing or on, underneath, and he went to the uh, standing position. Here, here was a beautiful counter takedown uh, by by McGinnis. Uh, he really did it so nicely at the edge. Looked like he was willing to kind of float off the end, and he didn't float off. He went right back in and got that takedown. Now he needs to get something done here in a hurry with that five-point margin. Plus, plus riding time. Right. It, it, it's it's uh, right now. It's a six-point lead. That riding time cannot be canceled. David's actually owns the Minnesota record in dual meet victories. Mm -hmm. Well, the, 79 of them coming into the tournament. Here. He's been a he's been a consistent, outstanding wrestler for them for years. At this point, it's a matter now of David has to set something up where he can take McGinnis to his back. And uh, time continues to run out, and if he just gets a two-point takedown, he's, he's got to put McGinnis on his back. Morning, Green. Green, Austin. Mark Pippen, the referee, just warned Green, which is McGinnis for stalling, for not wrestling. Of course, he's in a position where, with a 5 6 0 lead, you can, you can take a little bit of a, bre a breath. And I don't mean taking a breath, he's just wrestling smart right now. Well, here's front head, spin top behind, but didn't get it. David did a, a good job of getting away after he made the initial right. move. Exactly. The whole thing is attack, counter attack, attack, counter attack. Sometimes takes five flurries to make something score. Now there we see that front head and arm. 
Again, it's a sit and look at that clock. He knows he's got it. Jeff McGinnis wins one for Iowa at 142. That clinches the team championship for University of Iowa. They've now won their 25th straight Big Ten championship. You put that up against any streak in sport, you're not going to find anything to match. If Matt Carter's fastball dropped below 90 miles per hour, it's boom! Throw heat, man. Throw heat. You can put it on the board! Yes! <laughs> Two Iowa victories and two Penn State losses in the first four matches of the Big Ten Championship meet have spelled silver of a different sort for the Iowa Hawkeyes. 25 consecutive team championships. Right now, the Hawkeyes are in a clinch situation, but for Penn State, that's a pretty steep hill. Extremely steep hill. It could be done, but we, we'll, we've got Penn State right now at 150. Clint Musser. The junior with a 23-match winning streak will go up against Bill LeCure, senior from the University of Michigan. Musser is ranked second in the United States, 29-2 and two on the season. There's LeCure, ranked number 10 nationally at 19-5. and five. This is his third consecutive trip to the Big Ten tournament. Last year, just one win away from All-American status. Yeah, this, this, this particular weight class has uh, developed uh, a little bit strangely here at the tournament the number one man ranked in the country eric siebert of illinois is at this weight he was injured in his second in his first match here and was had to, to uh, forfeit the rest of his matches he ended up six so consequently eric uh, siebert had to drop out and we have these two young men battling for that big 10 championship of course lacour was uh, seated fourth and uh muster is seated second eric siebert was 30-0, had defeated Drew Pariano of Northwestern in the quarters, but then was not able to go in the semis. LeCure with a first round bye. He defeated Indiana's Kevin Stanley by two points, the decision in the quarterfinals. This is his first meeting with Musser. Yes, uh, nice mo motion going in underneath on that leg of Musser, and LeCure has got the first part but you got to put the final part on to get your score. Now he's got arm over. Now he's got a chance to score. When I say arm over, that's his right arm over to, over the top. That's two. There you go. There's Joey McFarland, the assistant coach at Michigan. He's uh, yelling instructions. Uh, he has the tendency to get excited, and that's uh, one of the nice things about coaching. Now Musser gets the one. Clint Musser unbeaten in the Big Ten four falls this season more aggressive he's if he gets on top watch him i understand he's pretty strong he, he's he's tough he's uh he's really a, a, an outstanding high school high school wrestler coming in from ohio and uh they expect big things from him and here's a shot at his first big 10 championship in tonight's finals in fact musser a three-time state champion at walt jesuit high school in akron and Bill LaCour is also an Ohio guy. He's from North Canada. <laughs> right. They're not far apart. Wrestling uh, in Ohio high school is just really outstanding wrestling. They got a tremendous number of, of schools competing, and they produce a lot of great wrestlers. Clint Musser starting in. Blocking off by Musser. He's countered on out. Of course, got that underhook. He's got that under underneath. Sometimes you can work a lot of setups from there. Now he tried to go underneath of it further, throw it up, and countered well by Musser. Thirty seconds exactly remaining first period. They'll start standing up. Well, they're tied in, and this is where a lot of fatigue can come into it right here. It looks like they're not doing anything, but they're working those arms at about 98% throughout this, trying to either 
gain an advantage or block off your opponent and clear out of something. There they go. Well, first period is done, and Lacour has got the lead. Yes, he does. Let's see how he got him. Now, see, he drove in, and he, and he had to take the arm over on the right side and drive Musser back. And as he did that, Musser had to bail out so he wouldn't be put on his back. That was the two-point takedown by Lacour. Clint Musser will start on top right. And it was, it was, it was Lacour's choice. He went to the bottom position, and he knows he can score from there. And he did with the escape for a 3-1 lead. Well, uh, a little bit far out. He's got to be a little closer when he hits that move. Uh, I think he's uh, a little too far out to, to make that one work successfully. Musser pinned Peter Rogers of Ohio State in 2 minutes 45 seconds in the quarterfinals. Then de decision Chad Kraft of Minnesota 2-1. to one. That one went overtime in right. the semis. Good match. Yes, it was. It was an outstanding match. Uh, this is going to be this is going to be tough. Both these guys are tough, strong. They, they, they can counter and they've also got some good offense. What's so the matter who puts that good move together and follows it for the scores. The corners that making more shots good. Than, than Musser is. Good reaction by Musser, though. To, he started to go, realized he didn't have it, he got right, right back out. Right, right. He looking for the counter, and as I look at these two gentlemen right now, I would say that uh, McCour looks like uh, fatigue may be setting in here, and one doesn't know that for sure, but uh, after watching these fellows for many, many years, it looks, looks like he's a little tired. There you see Dale Barr sitting beyond Joe McFarland. He's the head coach. Dale Barr, former Iowa State wrestler, national champion. Now, stalling. Stall warning. Stall warning on the court. Oh, and he got hit by the head. They hit heads, and the court is a little bit uh, stunned. We still got a lot of wrestling to do here, Brian. We're looking at uh, 45 seconds left in this period, and you've got another full two minutes, unless. Someone puts his opponent flat on his back and holds him. Phil LaCour is a three-time academic All-Big Ten. Actually, a first-team academic selection in 96 by the Wrestling Coaches yes. Association. Yes. So a heady guy. Second at Minneapolis in 1997. Fourth in the conference in 1996. A year, oh, I'm sorry. In 96. Yes. yes. Two years ago. Now he... Got a chance to take a bit of a blow, and McCour went right out and tried to hit that head touch and go situation. Cuts the head and go. Referee separates him and puts him back in the middle. Now the referees now will call the stalemate call a little quicker than they used to. That's been an evolution. If no action is happening, they call. Now, it looked like he blocked it, but Musser made a nice power move under there and actually broke the the clamp that looks like oh around him, look at now he's got to get into the mat but a beautiful little arm drag and countered well by LaCour so a flurry at the end of the second period the advantage remains with LaCour of Michigan Michigan coaches now we see the lift by Musser to put LaCour back down, but LaCour comes right back up, breaks the arms, and does the turn for the spin and the, t and the escape. Clint Musser has a 23-match winning streak. He has not lost since last December the 6th when Chris Ayers of Lehigh beat him. And there's a point for him. And uh, uh, on the other side, LaCour kind of had a, a, a poor end to the, of the season before the tournament. He lost three straight coming into the tournament before he got here. So uh, he's, uh, he's in there nicely. He doesn't have the takedown. Got to bring him back to the center is what he's got to do. There it is, That's the takedown. Two. He scored it on the mat. Now, apparently, potentially dangerous situation with that right leg of Musser. Now, Musser, he's on his back, and he's in some distress. A little bit. That right knee got a little bit cranked, I believe, in that situation. Of 
quarterback uh, talking to uh, his coaches. Now here, see, he's done a nice job of getting in. And it's a question of, of the trip, what he's going to use here. And he just kind of drives him down, but right there, as he drove him down, the knee went a little bit, foot went to the outside a little bit. Probably a slight sprain. He looks like he's walking on it very well. Seems to be okay. But he'll start on the bottom here, down 5-2, with got, a minute 25 to wrestle. Got work to do. And, of course, if you're muster, you think, I'll get the escape, I'll get the takedown and tie it with a one-point one escape, two-point takedown, and then the possibility to see what happens. But he's got to get the escape first. I'll tell you, this is a guy who, he, he's got the reputation, in fact, went to Poland with the U.S. national team last summer. And they get to the edge... And they go off. Uh, we're hearing some crowd reaction. Obviously, the Penn State people are, are looking. They really wanted there a stalling call on McCure. Referee Chuck Yagwa is uh, making the calls, and he did not call it. You were talking about uh, Musser going out in the international agenda. Now is the escape. Wins the point. There, there's the 5-3. One minute exactly to, to go. Dive by Musser. Counterattack by McCure. Lecure oh. drives him out. Yes. Dale Barr encouraging Lecure. Uh, the concern for the Michigan staff is Lecure makes a move and doesn't complete it. Russell could spin behind for the takedown. And Lecure has got the stalling warning on him. If he is called, he will be penalized a point. So he's got to stay active, and he's got to attack. Thirty seconds. Now Musser's going to put the pressure on, but he has got to shoot. The cure drove in. Yep. Then back there. Away. Now see, he's he's trying to buy some time. Oh, almost, but no takedown by Musser. Ten seconds to go in this match. Musser wants to do a fresh start. He kind of backed out of there so they would go off the mat. Bill LaCure, the number four seed here. Number four seed. Stalling, that's one point. Four, wow. Musser. Five, four, final score. So the underdog bags one. Yes. As Bill LaCure stops Clint Musser's winning streak at 23 matches and wins a Big Ten championship for the University of Michigan at 150 on this, his third consecutive trip to the Big Ten tournament. We interrupt this program for a Blackhawks home ice update. Brought to you by the Discover Card. To the far circle. Hawks, on Oilers at the UC. Pat Timer Foley the has the call. Bill Guerin rifled it by the gloved hand of Hackett, but it hit the far post. Now the first Hawk penalty's over. Here's Hammer, like a drive. He scores! Interference! With, with Hackett being bowled over by Ryan Smith as the puck went in the net, it's going to be a good goal. Well, my Discover Card statement reads like a wish list. What? Toys. I like toys. I love pinball machines. This will improve my golf game. <laughs> it is unbelievable to me how fortunate I've been in my life, and uh, I can't ask for anything more. The best thing you can do with your Discover Card cash back bonus is give it straight to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. That's what I do. It pays to Discover. Call 1-800-IT-PAYS-2. Accepted where you see the nervous sign. Halfway through the competition here at Penn State, and we are done in terms of the team championship. Our last match at 150, the loss by Musser, puts Iowa firmly in control of a 25th consecutive team title as we get ready at 158 for another Iowan. The redshirt freshman Gabe McMahon against Penn State senior John Lang. So again, head to head, but now we're in a moot situation, Ken Kraft. Right, it, it, the, the team championship is over. 
Obviously, these guys are wrestling for many important things as well. This, this is interesting. Here again, the second seed and the fifth seed. Uh, Lang being the second seed, and McMahon was the fifth seed, and he's one of those guys who, you know, when Iowa wins, somebody generally does something that's not expected, and here's a man in the finals who was supposed to only get fifth in the tournament in, in McMahon. McMahon is one of only one or two guys in the finals who is not nationally ranked. Right, exactly, yes. No, a nice move by Lang. Step in double, and the takedown. The, now he went out front, and he went out a little too far, and McMahon just reversed him. That's the reversal, so it's 2-2. Two -two. The national duels, McMahon decision, Lang beat him 15-8. Yes, yes. So, uh, so, so the number five knows a little something about beating the number two. Right, that's right, that's right. But for the the total season, the way they're seated here, obviously Lang had done better than than McMahon. So Lang at 18 and four, McMahon at 21 and 10. John Lang, a seventh place finisher each of the last two years at the Big Ten, so now he's playing for the big prize. That's right. He, he's, he's moved up uh, after two seventh placers. Of course, we should point out that McMahon was coached in high school by none other than Lenny Zaleski, uh, Jim Zaleski's older brother. Yeah, oh, nice move by McMahon. I, he's done a nice job there, but he hadn't gotten the takedown, and he's allowed Lang to counter out. Good job by Lang. Now Lang goes underneath, but they're outside. They're off, yeah, they're out, off the edge. There's Jimmy, and just a few years ago, not many, his brother Lenny was coaching McMahon up in Alaska. McMahon, a three-time state champion at Palmer High School. Outside Anchorage, I believe that is. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you could call that suburban Anchorage. Suburban but, Anchorage, there you go. But he was he was 118 and three with 78 pins oh. in high school. He put them on their back, didn't he? He was just he is settled for a takedown right now, and he's still not going to get it. He's been getting close, and part of a young wrestler, they don't learn to finish some of those moves as well. Now John Lang's high school days a little bit further in his past. He's a senior here at State College, but at Longwood High School in Ridge, New York, four times, all four years, Lange was a high school All-American. That's a tremendous accomplishment. Right now, they, they've slowed it down a little bit. They've been very active, and now they're, they're starting to breathe a little heavier, and we might see them slow it down a little bit as we finish up this first period. Down to the last 10 seconds. We're going to end the first with Lange ahead by a point. Things happened in a hurry, hurry early in this match. Yes, yeah, see, we, we, we see Lange come in, hits the double. It looks like he's on his way down, and there he catches the two-point takedown, and immediately McMahon spins right underneath that arm and comes up on top for the reversal. So that's where you found the 2-2. Two -two. And then, and of course, later Lange got the escape for the current 3-2. McMahon on top to start the second period. Now Lange gets the escape. Gets the escape. Takes the 4-2 lead. I think that Mayhan, he appears to be much more comfortable uh, working on his feet and working takedowns. And he didn't really try to control Lange that, that much. McMahon is in the finals advancing by decision in the quarters and semis he decisioned dan to caesar of ohio state in the semi oh and there's two counter by Lange. For Lange. mcmahon made the first offensive move and there you see uh, tom brands and jim zaleski trying to get mcmahon to stay with his moves a little bit better as he attacks oh. tyler wiley concerned the referee concerned about the potentially dangerous is on the left leg of mcmahon 
So McMahon beat the Caesar of Ohio State, who had in turn upset the top seed, Minnesota's Josh Holiday. Yes, yes, that was a big upset. And then Lange scored a major decision in the pigtail round. Nothing yet here. Well, he had, he had gotten the escape, and McMahon made a nice move, but almost is just exactly what it was. Almost, it was. It was no points, but there was a lot of flurry. From the pigtail of the quarters, a decision for Lange, and then he decisioned the number three seed, Eric Douglas of Purdue, 5-2 mm -hmm. in the semifinals. Well, Lange looked for the counterattack. Uh, the first move was in by McMahon. There you see in the final 10 seconds here, middle period, Advantage Lange. Yes. Here was all, all that particular action as they went back down to the mat. Lange just has got the. All right. That's a okay. point. There's the point. McMahon's down now by two points. This thing is very. Far from completion, but as I say that, McMahon makes a nice move in, stops, and the counterattack by Lange scores the takedown. Strong upper body. Yes. He's been battling knee problems, Ken. Yeah, he has lost three of five and then had a wrist injury that kept him out of the last four dual meets of the season. Right, so it's tough to come into a tournament like this and, and be in top shape when you haven't wrestled. McMahon is showing a little bit of that freshmanitis. Uh, he uh, he's making some good moves, but he's not completing. And he did get the escape there. Now he knows he's got to go. One minute to wrestle. One minute. But he have to make clean moves and complete them. Take them all the way through. Langy's going to look for the the good counter attack. See what's available. Now, oh my gosh, that's beautiful, beautiful move by McMahon. He says the coaches say, turn him loose. We're going to go to the takedown game. There's 30 seconds left in this period. And a two point difference is what the board says. And, and we talked about Lange not being able to wrestle late in the season. He looks tired. 17 seconds remaining as they come back to center. The crowd here they, Bryce they, Jordan obviously has got its preference, but this redshirt freshman from Iowa isn't going away. No, he's not, and he, he's tired as well. They're both really semi-punched out here. Four seconds. Stalemate called by referee Wiley. And there it is. It's McMahon took one last dive, but John Lange from Penn State thrills the crowd here at Bryce Jordan with the title at 158. And again, a great finish for him after wrestling seventh in each of the last two yes. years. Stand by as we get set for a dandy at 167 at Penn State. Come on, come on. I'm all over you. Look out, Watson. Your shoelaces are untied. Hey there, Hot Shots. How would you like to compete in Fox Sports Chicago's Celebrity Three-Point Shootout? Hey, look over there. Just send us a postcard or drop us an email by March 11th. One lucky winner will receive two Bulls tickets and have a chance to shoot with the stars during the March 16th Bulls-Nets game. Come on, bring it to me. Come on, I'm all over you, baby, baby. I'm letting you shoot. I'm letting you shoot. It's the Fox Sports Chicago Celebrity Three-Point Shootout. Let's go. Big Game J and the Iceman. I've been in that situation. Expert analysis only the pros know. That's not smart basketball. Weeknights, Craig Simpson and James Worthy take you inside. Okay, let's go to the Fox Scope. And tell it like it is. You can't play like that if you want to win. Worthy, Simpson, these guys pull no punches. Now what was he thinking? Fox Sports News Primetime. We are there. Weeknights at 10. 
at 167. We've got a two-time defending NCAA champion, though not at this class. Right. Joe Williams, senior out of the University of Iowa, 28-0 this season against Mark Bybee from Northwestern University. Bybee at 13-3 on the year, has had to battle a neck injury, but has worked his way through into the finals here as the number six seed wrestling that man right there, the top dog. That top dog, that's Joe Williams. He's been a fabulous wrestler for many, many years, and uh, he is the defending champion, NCAA champion. He actually was upset a year ago in the Big Ten Finals by Ernest Minion. But then went back and won the NCAAs again at 158. So he's a right. step up now in class. He's moved up a weight. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, we're ready for 167. Mark Bivey, of course, comes from Northwestern. Uh, he has been, uh, has some had physical injury during the year. He's another one of those dangerous kind of wrestlers. He was seeded sixth. He met uh, the third seed and, and beat him. And then he, then he pinned his opponent in the semifinals, Will Hill from from uh, Michigan State. Uh, Joe Williams is a, a very uh, technically expert wrestler. And uh, he just can score takedowns at any given time. But he will make sure the setup is there. And then when he hits it, he pulls that trigger and he goes. So we're going to see them move around here. Uh, both men trying for setups. Obviously, the other man's doing his series of blocks himself, trying to set his thing up. Uh, this this season, Williams won his fourth Midlands title. He's a three-time All-American. So consistent. Right. From the right. beginning, consistent. Yep. He is, uh, he is uh, a, a guy that... Now there, Mark Bivey just made a, a first move in. There's John Kading, assistant coach, and head coach Tim Sazeski just sitting behind him. John Kading is a... Uh, Former Olympic, I mean Oklahoma wrestler, and former NCAA champion while he was wrestling down at the University of Oklahoma. Originally from Illinois, and he's back in town now as an assistant at Northwestern. Bobby tries for the legs, then hops right back up, and they separate for a moment. Both these guys from the Chicago area, as a matter <laughs> of fact. Both wrestled in the Catholic League. Uh, Joe Williams at Mount Carmel, and uh, Mark was... Bobby at St. Lawrence. St. Lawrence, yes. His former state champion, and of course, Williams was a, also a multi state champion. He's made the shot in, blocked nicely by Bybee. There's all this, watch the wrist, controls, coming inside. You, you, if you could hear the coaches, if they're... Time out. And there you can hear. Yes. <laughs> From the Iowa bench, Zaleski says, move him, move Joe. Him. Yeah. Now, Williams has got something that requires that he lose a contact? I think it's contact lens. Um, sometimes they, they slide off to the side, and that may be what happened here. There he, now he took it out. So they come back to center? <laughs> is, is good eyesight that important? Well, it's just something they think, but uh, I've seen some guys that wrestle pretty well that couldn't see very far. They get awfully <laughs> sensitive hands. They feel real good. Joe Williams has won 33 consecutive matches. Lost by the slimmest of margins to Ernest Benyon of Illinois. Two to one in double overtime in the 1997 Big Ten Final at Williams Arena in Minneapolis. Yes. Uh, that was one of those that went right to the end and they were just both battling all the way. Oh, there was a beautiful double. That's two. And the takedown. Now, Bybee's trying to look for something to, to throw him through. In order to do that, that would be very difficult. There's the stalemate call. So we've got six seconds on the period clock, and there's Coach Sazeski in the middle. They release slowly. Yeah, I, I think there was a little bit of the legs tied up. I heard uh, William say, hey, let's make sure we release the legs. Oh, nice. He goes for the escape and he gets Beautiful, it. beautiful move by Bayview. And that's so important in the, in the last seven seconds to score that one point. 
Oh, that's huge. He uh, he really. Let's take a look at what Williams did to gain the advantage. You're going to see quickness, power, right here. Boom! Deep in on that double. Lifts it, takes him right up. And the, even though... And now here again with here's just... The, the quick stand-up and the turn by Bybee for the one-point escape. He had six seconds right before the end of the period. Now he's just scored his second escape at the beginning of the second period. The score is at two each. We're going to see, this is basically, appears to be a takedown game. Now, Bybee, that's really in, in uh, Williams' favor because Bybee's a mat wrestler, and he, if he gets on top of the guy, he can turn him. Now, Bybee is a little taller, a little yes. longer. Well, that length can help you as you're, as you're trying to control both ends of a guy, and uh, I don't know what we're going to see Bybee on top, and of course, Joe Williams knows a lot about Bybee as well. They have seen each other a time or two. Yes. Bobby, Bobby recalls that they have met twice and that both times Williams decisioned him. Right. The one I do remember were two years ago in the Big Ten tournament. And uh, Williams defeated Bobby that time. In that particular tournament, though, Bobby beat Benyon 14 to 5. So, but that's two years ago. That's the history, as we say. Now, Bybee wants to make sure that he doesn't open himself up for another one of those double legs, and he's got to keep those elbows in close. Oh, now, Bybee's made a beautiful move from out, but that's the first part of it we've talked about. Now he's trying to lift. Going again. Williams manages to very fine make defense. a quick move around. Well, very fine defense by, by Williams, and you expect that from him. That's the first time somebody's been in on his leg. Now they're off. They'll stand up here in the center. 16 yeah. seconds. There's Tim Szeski. Two-time NCAA champion. He is up a weight class, but you don't lose those technical skills, do you? Oh, you never lose those. Now, here he comes. See, and he knew what the time was left. And, and boy, he, 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 drew, he was so deep on that penetration. Beautiful move. And that's where it will end. Joe Williams ahead of Mark Bybee, four to two with two minutes to wrestle. Now the key is Joe Williams. See, Joe Williams chooses not to go down and get the escape. He doesn't want to be underneath Mark Bybee. And he has the he has the luxury of being ahead four two. Obviously, he earned that luxury. Now he's coming again. He's coming again. He's going to step over. And he's got it. Yes, he does. He's starting to open up. Uh, he is uh, so awfully good. Uh, in winning his four straight Midlands titles, there's only been about three guys to do that in the history. Very powerful. I mean, you, you want to talk about cut, you want to talk about ripped. Right. There he is. Powerful and quick. And got has great balance. Nice. Kind of stumbles to the edge of the mat there. Well, lost his lost his balance. Uh, I said he had great balance, and of course, then he lost his balance. <laughs> Must have heard you. Yes. I'll show him. Here's the Northwestern staff. Mark Bobby mentioned the neck injuries that he has suffered redshirted last year. Yes. Yes. Due to the injury, he was. Uh, he was out all year with the neck problem and it came back nicely, but he did do a slight injury to it a few months or a few weeks ago. Now he's down in class. He won the Michigan Open at 177. Yes, but he's really a 67 pounder. He was a 58 pounder two years ago, as I say. Uh, he's 167 pounder. Here come, here he comes, but countered out. Bybee got the underhook on the other side and blocked it. So that three points apart with just over 30 seconds to wrestle. So Bybee now he's got to get something. Bybee has got to get the takedown, and then Bybee's got to look for the turn. I don't, and, and that's a tough assignment, no question about it. But that's what he's got to do now. Williams looking for that uh, cross ankle pick. Now he's just going to he's going to really kind of slow it all down right here, which is the wise thing to do. Ten seconds. 
And here comes Joe Williams. Came right at that double. Looking for the exclamation point here. As time expires and Joe Williams, a conference champion in 1996, moves up a step and wins his second Big Ten championship. And he will go on to the NCAAs with a chance at a third NCAA title. Yes. Outstanding career, but it's not complete yet. Take a look at some of his work. Now watch him come now. He's going to see he, he actually caught Bybee on Bybee started the move and then he sensed it and caught him on the kind of the recounter the second move and then he steps right over top of it and there's the takedown. Outstanding wrestler. Great ability. Great talent. Bybee showed a great deal of quickness during the match. Bybee showed me a move I hadn't seen very often when he when he made that nice move in didn't get the takedown but he made the nice move in. We interrupt this program for a Blackhawks home ice update. Brought to you by the Discover Card. Missed the target. Hawks, Rebound Oilers at the UC. Pat Foley has the call. Chelios at the near point. Let's it go. That didn't get through. Blocked by a Marshan who dives to try to clear it. The puck came up, hit Chelios in the head. Play continues as a dazed Chelios has to try to chase back into his own end. So, you want to see my Discover Card statement? I am very, very prissy. Put up or shut up! I love to be pampered. I go have my hair done. I love to go have my nails done, have pedicures, manicures. My biggest weakness would have to be shoes. Hmm. Cashback bonus award really floats my boat. How many credit cards make a statement like that? I am definitely a shopaholic. It pays to discover. Accepted where you see the nervous sign. So adding to the point total for the University of Iowa as we start now at 177. Javon Herman, left side of your screen. Now he's at the left side in blue for the University of Illinois against Mitch Clark, the senior out of Ohio State. Clark ranked number one. Javon Herman ranked third nationally. So a couple of high-powered talents here at 177. And actually, it's, it's interesting. As you mentioned, Clark is ranked number one nationally, but he was seated second coming into this tournament because Herman beat him two weeks ago in a dual match. They have met twice this year, the finals of the Midlands, as well as that dual meet two weeks ago, and they're one and one. So it's the rubber match for the Big Ten Championship. Yeah, they've ridden the seesaw. 4-3 decision for Clark at Evanston. A 9-3 decision for Herman. In yes, the which, which is surprising. The, 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 you know, the, the difference in that 9-3, that six-point difference, is a, is a surprise to me because Clark never gets very far behind no matter where. It's a, he's, a, he's a close match kind of a wrestler. And he's another heady guy. Both these guys are really I, what I would call heady wrestlers. Clark at 33 and one on the season pinned his opponent in the quarterfinal decision number three. Rob Nidlinger Purdue seven to two in the semifinals and look at him work now. Yeah, he's he, he made a counter move on Herman's first shot and Herman still got something coming. But look at the counter action by Clark. There's Russ Hellickson, head coach at Ohio State in there. He's leaning to his right. I think he wants Clark to lean to his right. That happens now and then as a coach. And this is a stalemate situation right now. Someone's got to make some improvement. And right now, the advantage would swing a little to Herman. Dangerous situation for both wrestlers. Yes, but uh, at this stage, Herman is is now if he can come around the back side but look at clark look trying to step over it yeah. and almost got it in and they come back neutral no advantage good action javon herman you mentioned the loss to clark at the midlands didn't lose again didn't lose 12 again. consecutive matches after that advanced to the final here at Bryce Jordan at Penn State by three decisions. Mm -hmm. So workmanlike. Very workmanlike. Knows where he is, knows where his opponent is. Uh, he's wrestled all that way. Was an NCAA runner-up a year ago. Uh, obviously, he's looking to, to win that big one as well. Now Herman, a three-time high school All-American at St. Charles High outside Chicago. 
and he's wrestling a guy upon whom I will mention Mitch Clark's record 33 and one so the one the loss to Javon Herman right a little headgear problem here he's got to reset it as he spun under the arm it got caught and almost took it off Mitch Clark won the Las Vegas Invitational he has scored talk about tough schedule <laughs> he has scored six wins over top ten wrestlers yes he he's proven he he belongs there but uh, Mr. Herman proved something two weeks ago so we'll see what happens in this one I think it's going to be a close one either way they've both done a lot of tape study since that bout of two weeks ago wrestling you have advanced the technology as we end the first period scoreless you have advanced the technology in wrestling as you have with so many other things that that tape review has become a big. second science it's big it's real big and it just continues to grow every match here the host school has to tape it for the opponent so every match has been taped throughout this tournament okay pretty much a release by by Herman he just let him go felt more comfortable trying to work on the feet now, Clark tried to go underneath that left arm of Herman's there's a move from out Clark started to try and work that head and arm you talk about the psychology of the game and now Clark makes the move yes he can't get it done well, it's, you know, it's almost, uh, I always have compared it to gymnastic routines, but you got someone stopping you doing your routine. So you work on motion, you work on position, all those things, just like a gymnast does. But someone's going to stop you and try and do this. Now, Clark seems to be setting up more attempts uh, as we go along here. He's working out of the, oh, that's, that must have caught a finger in the eye. Blink a little bit, he's okay. Right back at it with 50 seconds on the clock. The key here also is, you know, you can't make this wild motion. Now, there, I think we're close. Now we'll see. Oh, he, he did, the, he did the, 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 the forward roll, trying to come back through. He's got to keep that leg. He's got Herman in trouble. Oh my gosh, two beautiful counter motion and movement by Clark. That's why he is so awfully good. Right there we saw he was in terrible position, terrible trouble, changed it into his takedown. And look at how he's tough on top as well. Very comfortable up there. And just like that, in the final 20 seconds of the second period, Mitch Clark takes a 3-0 lead on Javon Herman. Now, see, the, uh, essentially the escape, you see uh, Herman riding, but he, at this point, decides, I'm just going to let him go. I'm just going to release him, even though it made Clark work for it a little bit. Now, look, how, look at the trouble he potentially is in, but he controls Herman's leg, He's going to take it on up. Even right here, it's so close, but now he's got it up, and he's got Herman in trouble. But he had to bring that leg up to put Herman down. And now we see him back on top again, third period. Here, Coach Hellick said, move him. He doesn't want to just lay. He's got to continue the pressure. Back out, back out, back out. Now it gets him off the ground a little bit. Yep. Well, see, when you do that, you've got control of your opponent. That's the almost ultimate control besides the pin. If you can lift a man, he's got nowhere to go but back down to the mat. And Herman, let's talk about stamina here because Herman looks like he's a little bit gassed. He, yes. he came into this match with a, with a healthy dose of respect. He, I understand from somebody in the Illinois program that he was paying not a whit of attention to the seating chart because he knew he was in for a long well, seven minutes. Yes, he he, oh, he he came close but just missed it. He went for, if he would have been able to catch that head, he would have gotten his reversal. One minute to go. Stalemate call. Bill Ross, the referee of this match. Russ Hellickson with his staff. Russ was a silver medalist in the 76 Olympics. 
lost to the Soviet, Reagan. Been a great coach at Wisconsin as well as Ohio State. Wrestled at the University of Wisconsin. And there's that control again. Uh, and that will make the bottom man tired. Kind of carry all the way. Herman, Herman just can't get anything going with his legs. No, nope. no, he's controlled. He's controlled. Now we got the crossbody, far arm, near leg, tied up. Getting down to the final 30 seconds here. Yeah, and we're not seeing uh, Herman really getting anything going. You've got to have something happening. See, the bottom man, you want him to build to his base, which means get up on his hands and knees. Then you make the motion, make the move. But Clark is so effective by tying up the legs and the arms. Well, Mitch Clark avenges his only loss of the season to Javon Herman, and he does it at the best possible time. Mitch Clark for Ohio State wins the Big Ten Championship at 177. Pop quiz time. What Nissan dealer has the best selection? Arlington Nissan! What Nissan dealer has the best prices, then tops it off with the best service? Arlington Nissan! So where should you go for any new Nissan, including the all-new 98 Altima? Arlington Nissan! There's only one, Bob Roman. Class dismissed. Bob Roman's Arlington Nissan in Buffalo Grove, one mile east of Route 53 on Dundee Road. We've got another defending NCAA champion at 190 pounds. He's Lee Fullhart, the junior from the University of Iowa, who is in a good one here in the championship round. In fact, Tim Hartung, the junior from Minnesota, is the number one seed here at Bryce Jordan Arena. Hartung ranks second in the country. Fullhart number three. Fullhart wearing the dark singlet. Hartung in the go for gold. Well. Fullhart had a fabulous NCAA championship a year ago and, and won it and uh, is the defending champion. He has been beaten a couple times uh, this year at least. Uh, yeah, twice as a matter of fact. Uh, the, the number one guy in the country is uh, Jason Robison from Edinburgh. And uh, he, they met in the Midlands and uh, Robison was the winner. Hartung's only lost this season to this guy right here. Yes. Full heart, third in the Big Ten in 1997, won the, or was second in the conference in 96. There's Jay Robinson yeah, in, in the, the middle, middle there. Marty Morgan to his right, the former Big Ten champion. We'll go back to the middle and start over again. Full heart, a two-time All-American. Lost to Hartung in the 1997 semifinal. That's why right. he finished third. Right. This is going to be a very physical, tough kind of match. Uh, both of these fellows are really muscular, strong, and they wrestle. They wrestle tough. After defeating Fullhart last year in Minneapolis, Tim Hartung went on to win the Big Ten Championship. He was third at the NCAA. Yes. Uh, and Fullhart, as I say, had a wonderful NCAA tournament and won the championship. As a matter of fact, he, the man he de defeated in the finals was uh, John Kading, our assistant coach, the man, the fellow in wrestling for Oklahoma. Now, Hartung was in for the takedown. He hasn't scored it yet. Dave Frisch is right on top of it at CNN. He's caught that, and Fullhart's caught the leg. See the leg he's caught, and if he can keep it, it's going to be tough for Hartung to score the takedown. See, he was locked around that leg. And, and he's got that, and that he, strong, he, he's got, he's got, got that strong grip. Yes, he does. And I believe to get the takedown, he's going to have to block. Yeah, there's the stalemate call. So he, he saved himself. He saved a, a, a takedown. The match between these guys that Fullhart won went to overtime. Yes. At the national duel. Forty-five seconds. 
From the Minnesota bench, the exhortation, you want to beat full heart. <laughs> this may be, in terms of rivalry, one of the most intense that we have here. Yes, they, they, they've uh, wrestled each other for some big time matches. And uh, you're hearing all kinds of coaching uh, expertise. And this, is, and this is just one of those where you wrestle each other for high stakes enough times, you get to a point where you just don't like the other guy very much. <laughs> We've seen now, it's interesting, we have seen as we get to the end of the first period, we have seen some relatively cautious wrestling yes, and that, here in the championship. And that, and that will happen when you're wrestling for the big time uh, championship. This is a title that's most important. And then you get, of course, the NCAA titles. Uh, it's one thing that's a natural human nature. There's Jay Robinson. Now well, he says, tough now, tough. Well, that's, that's good, good advice. Scoreless first period. It's still a wide open match. And uh, you know, as far as trying to predict this one, this was very close to a, a toss up, but you gotta give the shade to Hartung. Hartung starts the second on top, full hard working for the point, but look at the grip that Hartung has on him. And, and Hartung has made a decision, he's gonna ride tough. He's not gonna ride loose and maybe release. He's gonna ride tough. Now he's gonna put that leg in, but doesn't like it in, I guess. He's trying to decide where he wants to go with it. Decides to take it out. Riding up heavy right now, high, that means up around the head. And there, he lost him at that point. First point of the match for Fullhart of Iowa. You know, we haven't gotten into an overtime situation, and I don't know that we will, but this one might result in an overtime. It's got the feel to it. Lee Fullhart scored a technical fall in the pigtail round, then a fall in the quarterfinals. A major decision over the number three, Sam Nider of Northwestern. That's right. He wrestled a great semis. bout against Nider in the semis. Well, Hartung has been the, a bit more of the aggressor right now. Hartung pinned his man in the quarterfinal, scored a major decision over Ross Thatcher of Penn State, 11 to one yes. in the semis. He's had a good tournament. They both had good tournaments. Uh, I, as I said, I expected this one to be a tough, grueling kind of match. Bullhart had his, had his fingers inside of the singlet. Yeah, the uniform. Yeah. That'll happen now and then. Most of the time, they come out simply. Full heart shoots, but a little close to the edge. Well, he got some advice. Shoot there, shoot there. Okay. Terry Brands, going out to full heart, lateral motion. He wants him to move right or left. He doesn't want him to back up. There he goes to the right. You wonder why Iowa has won 25 consecutive Big Ten championships when you figure that Dan Gable is out of the mix because he needed a little time off, needed to get a new hip, right. needed to get a little extra energy, and, and you find Zaleski on the bench with the Brand brothers and all that they did in their NCAA careers. No they're, wonder. They're all, they're all at least three-time NCAA champion. Uh, okay, now their guy Fullhart has a one-nothing lead after two and and he will start on top yes he will of course obviously gives hartung a chance to score but see hartung in the second period got very high right in here and he's so up near there he can spin right back through it and that's what's going to happen as, as full heart spins back through drives his right arm between the bodies for the takedown or for the escape had a full start to start the third so now, and here we got we got, we got an almost a replay. He's going to come back inside, I believe, Hartung. But uh, Fullhart staying tighter. But he also gave Hartung the head. Oh, and oh, coming right point. in. He got the escape, and he went right in for the takedown. He doesn't have it. Fullhart countering. Now Hartung drives him to the edge, and look at Fullhart come back. Well, Hartung is breaking him back. Hartung brought him back with that leg. And uh, it's close, but difficult for Hartung to score in that location because this action occurs 
somehow and they're probably going to go out but now they're coming back toward the center and that's directed by Fullhart. he felt his best counter was that way as well because right now the advantage could be Hartung without any score at this stage of this with this motion going on and there he called the stalemate no score 40 right now I I see some fatigue in both wrestlers and I'm I'm not able to detect one or the other but they they look tired and if they go overtime they got it at least two more minutes to go if nobody scores a takedown in the first overtime give you an idea of the level of competition here in this match Tim Hartung has 34 career pins yeah. Yeah, he's and how he oh how he has had to work against Fullhart. Yeah, I mean they are there. He's just he would love to get a two point takedown, let alone any. I mean he'd love to get the back point, but he's not. Okay. We're gonna okay, go here we go. We're going OT. All right, it's a two two minute period. Uh, first score, it's sudden death. Someone scores, it's over. If no one scores in this two minute period. They will flip the card, and then one will get a choice to go under. Oh, Hartung shoots. It, Hartung has got him. And he's got he's it. He's got it. Tim Hartung makes a quick move inside of 20 seconds of overtime, and he wins at 190. He made a deep, deep dive. He was a little ways out. That's a great win for him and a tough loss for full hire. Tim Hartung, back-to-back -back championships. Uh, take a look at this. You know, it looks as if he might even be a little too far out, but there he is. Now, as as Fullhart's head came up, boy, he went into that low double leg, and our, uh, Fullhart's trying to throw him by. But right there, that's it. A great victory for Hartung as he defeats the 1997 NCAA champion. The cat we interrupt this program for a Blackhawks home ice update. Brought to you by the Discover Card. Hammering it around the board. Hawks, it Oilers at the UC. Pat Foley the has the call. Just wide of the net. Rebound in behind the Buckberger. Centering Marchand, he scores! Nobody near the front of the net for Chicago. Todd Marchand, whose initial shot sailed wide, then just was left to walk to the net all alone, and he poked home an easy one. John Lithgow performs the Discover Card Dive Along song. An extemporaneous piece. Provided for your dialing pleasure. While you call 1 800 It Pays To and apply for your Discover Card, the card with the cashback bonus award that always <laughs> pays you back. That was a nice surprise. And that's music to everyone's ears. It Pays To Discover. To apply, call 1 800 It Pays To. Accepted where you see the Nova sign. Close at Bryce Jordan Arena with the big guys. And once again, a number one meets number two. The number one is Shelton Benjamin of Minnesota. Aaron Richardson, the senior from Michigan, in the opposite corner. Well, I, let, let's talk about weight here a little bit. Heavyweight, they don't have an exact weight class to make, except they must be under 275 pounds. Richardson weighs about 250 Benjamin weighs about 225 and look at Richardson come make them right on the whistle essentially into a move but look at the look at the counter and the, and the two points two points for, for Benjamin. Benjamin there was some, uh, the crowds yelling a little bit from whether it was a takedown but absolutely assistant referee Frisch agrees with Mike Allen the referee that's doing this now here uh, Benjamin lets him up and, he, and Richardson comes right back at him also with an attempted at takedown unsuccessful Richardson 
ranked second in the country. Again, this is one of those situations where the top seed in the tournament is actually lower ranked nationally because Benjamin is number five right. in the United States. 30 and four his season to 26 and three for Richardson. Right, and but in the head on, I believe Richardson lost to Benjamin. That may not be the situation. That is correct, they, uh, three to one. Yes, okay. Aaron Richardson was second in the Big Ten meet in 1997. Shelton Benjamin was sixth at Williams Arena, went on to finish fifth in the NCAAs. Right. He, he, had a, he, he had a real uh, very average tournament a year ago, but he really came on uh, extremely well. There's Jay Robinson and his staff. Shelton Benjamin, a two-time junior college All-American and a junior college national champion. Yes. He also runs the 100 meters for the Golden Gopher track team and is a member of their 4x100 relay team. Oh, my God. I didn't know that, but you've been finding all kinds of interesting information. On the other hand, Richardson's a pre-med with a Spanish major, I believe. Uh, outstanding Spanish, student. If Spanish or German, foreign language. One, 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 of, the, one of those foreign languages. Back to the matter, he's doing it's German, and he's yeah, doing they're... something that neither you nor I could. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, it looked like Benjamin had had a takedown. He was on his way and countered by Richardson. However, it's still close to a, a takedown by Benjamin. One oh, now, he saved it. Uh, Richardson saved it with good counter motion. It's always dangerous when you're up high like that. Right. Oh. Uh, if you got a man's leg in the air, you got a shot at him. Now Richardson nice into a single and a nice motion and the takedown. Now if he can, he drives into his back, but he didn't do that. Good explosion. Richardson is a very explosive man. He, he's a straight ahead kind of a guy, I believe, where he'll really come at you. And I think Benjamin can give you a little bit more lateral motion. Of course, going down the track at 100 meters, he probably goes straight ahead. <laughs> now here, that weight differential of 25 pounds can take a, a little bit. He can keep him down easier being a smaller man. Michigan staff, oh, stall warning. Stall warning on Benjamin. Not trying to build up to his base. He's just laying down there. So if he's detected stalling, it'll cost him a point in the future. Aaron Richardson leads 3-2 after the first period. Right. And here, as the whistle blew, look at Richardson. Boom. Touch and go. Hit the head. Drive in. And then didn't get it. But ben Benjamin came up on top. And neither scored in that sequence. Benjamin turns Richardson loose. Escape. 4-2. He wants to work on his feet, obviously. I hear a lot of, lot of coaching in the background. Move it, move it. Move him, and that's an important part. And the rest of the noise, listen, but... There's Minnesota staff again. Now Richardson in nice on that leg again. But he hasn't got it in the down. Benjamin reaches over and gets him under. Yep. And he counters out. Yep. Nice, nice counter by Benjamin. Aaron Richardson advanced to the finals. Well, he got in by technical foul his first match. Then an injury default situation. Then he decisioned the number three Carl Rosler of Illinois, seven to four in the semifinal. It was a good match, too. Benjamin gave Minnesota the championship at the national dual meet by pinning Iowa's West Ham. West Ham, right, right. Huge win for Minnesota to win that national duel in January. Of course, two weeks later, Iowa came up and beat Minnesota at their home in a dual meet. Interesting year for Iowa. Yes. With three yeah. losses, I mean, that's... Uh, two of them at home in Carver Hawkeye. That's right. Including one to Penn State. One to Oklahoma State. And the other one against Minnesota. And they're all three at Harvard. Tells you what's going on in this league, the top three teams. Yeah. They're moving, they're moving. I, 
I find it interesting, and Richardson is really wants to attack the right side. He wants to go to his left. Benjamin wants to shoot low. Yes, and, and if uh, Richardson can block, and of course, maybe we're going to see one where we're going to find endurance. Endurance might be the, the difference in this match. Marty Morgan, Jay Robinson. Two top guys at Minnesota. Now so Richardson with the advantage going into the final period. Okay, now Benjamin, I think, even started to wonder whether I should choose standing so he won't ride me, but he's decided he's got to score that escape point to be in this match. Now remember, Benjamin is wrestling with the stall warning. That's right. And Benjamin did not move on the whistle. I, I, I was surprised. I thought he would make the first great motion out. Now he's building up, building up. Now in this situation, Richardson wants to try and control that inside arm, and he didn't, That's and the there's the escape. They've, uh, it's a 4-3 match. With, with riding time just over the, one, the magic one minute, 106. I don't get, oh, another step in. Another step in by Richardson. He got that leg pretty easily, but countered by Benjamin. Referee saying offense, go. Yeah, yeah, he wants people to attack. Working the, watch the arm, watch the hands coming in. We're, they're gonna work off an elbow or work over top the elbow. That's where Benjamin is right now on the left side. Now Richardson going ahead and hooked. Broke it. I don't think we're going to see Richardson make a shot under these circumstances. He's got the lead. And he's almost golden here. Got him. Okay. He's, uh, he's warned, warned Richardson now for stalling. And with a takedown, it's this one's over. Richardson wins the Big Ten Championship. Aaron Richardson gives Michigan a pair of victories here. A very sweet moment for the Wolverines after a difficult year in which one of their members, Jeff Reese, died while trying to make weight. Back in December, So, yes. so what a bright moment here to counter that. A, a, a nice ending on a season that's been most, most difficult. And there is Richardson trying to ride, and then Benjamin gets up, makes the turn inside for the escape. For a limited time, if you buy tickets to the final eight regular season Blackhawk games, you can guarantee yourself that same great great day, day of individual effort, but also the Iowa Hawkeyes, the silver medal, the silver anniversary as team champions of the Big Ten. An unbelievable streak. For Ken Kraft and our entire crew, I'm Brian Davis saying so long from Happy Valley. Coming up next, Fox Sports News. You've been watching the Big Ten Wrestling Championships on Fox Sports Chicago, your home of Fox Sports Net.